you only live on the corner. I'm in the black jacket. <laughs> Come on. You're not late yet, but you will be in one more minute. It's Monday morning. Girls, I don't know what's slowing you down, but it is starting to annoy me. And head teacher Mrs Ballard is on late duty. Get a move on, please. After Christmas, when you're counted by the local authority, we won't be able to stop them from giving your parents £60 fines. And actually, I hope they think it's funny as you do and lose the earrings. They're too big for school. I reckon you've just changed the school to, like, a concentration camp. <laughs> you should never say somewhere's like a concentration camp either, cos what happened to the people in the concentration camp is the most terrible thing. Sometimes I want to kill you, but I wouldn't actually murder you, John. What sort of pupil were you at school? I was somebody that didn't really like it. Um, but basically, I had no aspirations. I got my first qualification in English GCSE when I was 26. And I'm not proud of that, actually. I'm embarrassed by it. But I guess I'm a living example of somebody that's actually come from a low starting point and in my life been able to grab hold of some opportunities. Chris, I think we've got one life tier that's there for the living. Do you know what I mean? It's in best interest to actually make sure you have as best to go of it as possible. I think lots of kids find the journey of growing up hard. I think it can be for some children, some of their most difficult years is all their hormones change, you know, getting in touch with their feelings, starting to make their own decisions and definitely testing the boundaries with school staff. OK. Can anybody tell me, first of all, what behaviour for learning means? Does anybody know? Learning your behaviour. OK, not quite. One student testing Mrs Ballard and her team particularly hard at the moment is Year 9, Emily. I will be your teacher all the way through to GCSE, so you're going to have to start... Are you really? ..showing some respectful oh. behaviour. Are you really? So oh, year, kill me now. Your What's your opinion of Emily? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> Emily. It's getting sore. So sorry. No. You need to move on to that table. Listen, you move now or I will ring on call. Right, so we'll move, cos he hit me. Yes, you because me. you hit him you as hit well. You hit me! What's the most annoying thing about school? The work. It's like, when are you going to ever need Pythagoras in your life? Or like how to know what a right angle triangle is? Like, you got... For music, you got YouTube. For geography, you've got a globe. For maths, you've got calculators. Then, for drama, you've just got life. Or you've got soaps. Do you know what I mean? Emily? No. Emily has a bit of an attitude. She's got a very quirky personality. But at the same time, I think there's somebody very capable underneath. She's like an onion. There's many layers to her. Someone got links on, it's you and it. No, I haven't got links on. How have I? I don't know. Is it a nice smell or a, a bad smell? I don't know, it's chocolate. No, no, it's not me, chocolate. She's actually a very likeable young lady when she hasn't got a cob on. <laughs> Are you a good pupil? No. I'm going to report to everyone. I'm going to report to him. I'm going to report to Miss Charles. I'm going to report to Mr Edwards. Emily has just come back to Willows after a year away at another school. Since her return, her poor behaviour has been puzzling the senior staff. Emily's come back to us after going up to a school in Scotland um, and actually how we've been sort of trying to catch her up. We see a lot of silly behaviour when she came back, you know, in the corridors and stuff and some foul language. Her language around the school is... Yeah, it's fine. It is difficult for us to understand what's making her tick. Emily, inside I'm coming! Lesson. Stop screaming at me! Bloody hell! Emily is different, and I just think we still haven't quite worked her out. It's period three, and Emily has an English class with Miss Charles. Emily, in your chair. You know, it is constant. It's like every two seconds, falling away, jack it off, listen up, do this. I'm thinking, I'm boring myself with these instructions. Like, this is so bad. You're nine. Can everybody just pop their pens down like this way? Some of you, Emily, 
Emily? When you first came to Willow's, were you good in class? Pretty much. I didn't, like, have one detention. And now I'm on, like, an hour every single day. What happened? I don't know. It's, like, changed. Emily? Emily? Look at me. Emily? Okay. This piece of work here is so, so high level. So the fact that you now have decided you're not going to be doing much is really sad for me because you've got so much potential. So let's knuckle down, finish the task, so that you can get a high level, because I want you to finish your show on, like, a level six or a level seven. And at the moment, I don't have any evidence to support that, but I know that you're a high level. Often, pupils misbehave because they struggle with the work, so often that means that maybe they need a bit more help or a bit more kind of guidance. Whereas Emily, when I saw some pieces of work that were brilliant, that was really alarming, because I was thinking, well, it's nothing to do with struggling with the work. There's something else going on here. OK, any pens must be picked up. Uh, girl, bring your books over and you can leave. Emily, you can't leave because your table's an absolute state. Hey! Oh, oh, don't matter what you say. It's nine o'clock, and Mrs Ballard and her team have another problem on their hands. Something happened yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. Dan started on me yesterday. Yeah, they heard. Okay. Grab a chair, then. I'm going to... Um, but that happened before, didn't it? A couple yeah. of weeks ago. Year 11 student Dan and best friend Sean have known each other since primary school, but it's a fiery friendship. And I'm not allowed in my proper mask, that's just because Sean's in it. Stupid, isn't it? So much so that at times the school won't allow the two boys in the same lessons. Dan is one of my best mates. I've known him since year seven. He's angry, but he can be happy on times. How do you think your friends would describe you? Pin in their ass. We've had fallen out in the past. We've had about five fights. What about? Stupid stuff. For the past few weeks, there's been trouble brewing over a girl. This one girl in this school, they have a crush on for four years. I know this is cheesy, but I said really cute pickup lines. Like what? <sighs> is your dad a boxer because you're a knockout? Kelsey is in year 10. She's friends with both boys something that's proving difficult to handle. Sean might think of me as a girlfriend, but then I think of him like... He's like an older brother and I never had. Tensions have risen so high, there's been threats of physical violence. It was out of hand. I was scared. It was over Kelsey, was it? Yeah. They said that you said something about him. Yeah. Women cloud the mind. Now, <laughs> yeah. nah, you got plenty of time for all that. I want to get this sorted out. What you need to do is just, you know, if you can't be friends with them, just don't be enemies. Just don't bother with each other. Unwilling to let the argument escalate, Mrs Ballard calls Dan to her office. Mr Cole, who runs Willow's behavioural unit, has heard news of the trouble. What? Why what? Stressing you out. Like how? How? Your behaviour. You want to know my behaviour? I taught Dan since he was in year seven, so I got a lot of empathy with him. For someone like Dan, I'll go that extra mile. I know what he's like. I know there's a good kid in there somewhere, OK? And he's got this rough exterior on him. He's just trying to break it down and say, Dan, you've got to get sort of on the right path. Have a sit down. I guess this is your chance to convince me that whatever was said, you were just saying it, and it's not true. So over to you. Basically, he's been, like, chatting shit, like, about me. So I basically went up to him, and he goes, if you're going to hit me, hit me now. I goes, I'm not going to hit you. You, hit, you started this, so why don't you hit me first? And I said, 
I ain't gonna lie. I said, if you don't let me, I'll let you. He don't want to fight you, does he? Simple. It's not right that you might have to come to school and be frightened of somebody. Do you understand that? Yeah. You have the entitlement to come to school, no matter what's going on outside in the estates and stuff, and you come in here and you're safe and you feel happy and you feel looked after. That's what we give you. But the same as that applies to everybody. You've got six months of school left. It looks like you're going to make it to the end. Getting to the end means a free choice, a free choice of what you decide to do. This boy cannot be hit by you. How can you convince me that you're not going to start something with him? I'll stay away from him. Do give me your word. Your word as a man that actually you're not going to say anything to him, say anything to anybody else or wind it up. Yeah. Okay, you shake my hand. God, Dad, I am going to trust you. But I'll tell you this, right? I wouldn't be trusting many people in this way. And my word about this is this. If he gets hit or if he gets pushed around, you will not just be put out of this school, you'll be talking to the police about this. And I will push for a police charge. Do you understand that? Yeah. Oh, It's three days since best friends Dan and Sean fell out over Year 10 student Kelsey. The school have been keeping the boys in separate lessons for their own safety. But Mrs Ballard has invited Sean to a meeting she's having with Dan to bring them back together. How are you feeling now? You look a lot calmer than what you did before. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any feelings for Kelsey, Dan? No. 100%. I know you've got your own girlfriend and, and stuff. She's just a mate. Yeah. You know, Sean, he's got a big crush on her. Um, and as part of this big crush, every so often they fall out. And I know that she's been confiding in you about that and you've sort of been giving her support as a friend and a mate. So I think somewhere in it, that's wound you up a bit. And definitely sometimes he's offended you by putting his foot right in his mouth. You know what I mean? Right. So shall we get him in and see what the poor fella got to say? Yeah. You can try and be a bit kind to him, please. Promise? Yeah. Things can escalate over something small, but actually they might seem small things to us. Um, but actually to a love-struck teenage boy in year 11, it seems like the most important thing in his life. OK, you are someone that's a big soft art that falls in love very easy in yeah. your mind. Yeah. You are somebody I that wants to be the knight in shining armour, protecting all the girls, right? So he sort of becomes the arch enemy to you, with you becoming the hero that actually sorts all this stuff out. If you ever go and watch stags when they're young, with their big horns, they do this thing called rutting and it's when they bash into each other with their horns and see who's the strongest, strongest one. This time between the two of you, because actually we are proud of you for being much more mature and grown up, it hasn't led to a fight because it's managed to, to stop. But today's the chance really to sort of talk through how you're feeling about each other. So yeah, do you... Good me, don't you? Yeah. Sometimes, but it's just like... I don't want to have a fight over something stupid. How does it make you feel when you two fall out? Jenny, it makes me scared because I, I don't want another one of these. I don't know how many boys in this school would sit here with someone of their own year group and say that they felt fear. I think that's a really manly thing to do, thank you. What did you say to me, Dan, how it made you feel after you had hit him like that? He did say that to me the um, very next day. Yeah. That he was feeling guilty about it. Yeah. And actually, that your anger had taken over and you'd gone too far. Yeah. So, you boys going to be man enough to have a handshake over this? Thank you. It is a risk taking pupils' word for it that nothing's going to, to happen. 
but you've got to draw the line somewhere. We've decided to keep them in the same class together to prioritise and prepare them for exams, but also because they're year 11s and they've made a promise to make sure that actually they're sticking to that, that promise. Do you hope they will? I do hope that they, they will. Every piece of me in my heart says that they will stick to that promise. My head says that this might kick off again. Right, ego isolation. I have an isolation. I'm feeling it already. It's halfway through term, and Year 9 Emily is continuing to get on the wrong side of staff. I need to speak to you now. I don't care. You don't I've swear. Been in isolation. Why don't you I don't me in listen again? to me. You swear there's no place like that in school. Do you understand that? There's loads of people. Oh my I God. don't care. Not in my class. Not in this school. Outside, you can do anything you want. I've already been in isolation. Why don't you want to stick me in there again? Well, they don't swear. Disgusting language. How can you not see that? You come into class, I give you the work, and you come up I with the language. It's disgusting. Jamie said something. So I, told him I told to Mr. Ennis he was disgusted. Oh, oh my God, OK. Stop being rude and come to work. That's all you got to do. That's why you come to school. Not to swear, to sit down and do some work. Now, you need to go to isolation, I'm or you need to go, then you gonna... need to go home. You need to reflect on your behavior, sweetie. That's what you have to do. And you're going to be on report now. You're right. I had a girl, right, coming into class. I gave her the work. And she said, what the fuck is this? Which girl? I mean, I mean, how rude. Morning, Emily. Morning, Emily. Morning, Mr. Hennessy. Why are you saying morning to me? So it's just normal, a polite human being thing, well, you, you never know? say normal morning to me. You're always like, Emily, you're a fool today. Is that understandable? Emily, next time Mr Lachasso comes to me saying you are being rude, you have be in isolation for three lessons. Do you understand? Just watch your tongue. With Emily's attitude showing little sign of improvement, Mrs Ballard has decided to talk to her teachers about what might be at the root of her behaviour. Can you see at the beginning how it's, it's really... She, does, she did every task. Yeah. She, you know, it's, she's using all the right things that I've asked her yeah. to use. She then went away and did the speech. But even, like, on. her punctuation thing, so smart, you yeah. see. And then every now and again we see glimpses of it when it's on a topic she likes. But then I sit with her today and I'm saying, OK, um, it takes a lot to get this out of her now. Like, all of a sudden, no capital letters. Much bigger writing. Much bigger writing. She's scribbling, she's not taking care of a book. And then even here today, we're supposed to be doing, like, showing, not tell, so describing what it looks like. Not even a sentence. I'm saying, oh, come on, Emily, like, you, can, you can do a sentence. I think I was probably invisible to the teachers in my school as somebody that actually just wasn't going to do well. So it's very important that actually we look to see what's underneath the behaviour. It is clear to me that although she's a bright girl, that Emily's struggling in class, I think she has low confidence, low self-esteem, and I think that that's really affected her. Mrs Ballard asks Miss Charles to see if she can get to the bottom of Emily's troubles. Aww. She's a mixture, because when you first meet her, I think you definitely think she's really confident. But I think, actually, when you get to know her and you sit down with her and you have an honest conversation, she's actually quite shy and insecure. Remember on review day, and we talked about confidence, didn't we? And you said... What would affect your confidence? Um, my anger. Your anger affects your confidence, OK. Think about a time when it has affected your confidence. Can you think of that? Remember that time in um, English when we had to do our things? Our speeches? OK. Can you think of another thing that brings your confidence down? About other people? 
Yeah. What about them? What makes like, them? Like, what they could say about it. Okay. So what they might say about you. She thinks a lot about what people think of her, and I think that's where the confidence issues come from. I have a low confidence. But, like, money. Um, why have you got low confidence today? I don't know. I've been through a lot of shit in my life. Everything. What else affects your confidence? Friends, family, school. I got bullied for my weight in Scotland because of all the bullies. I did not eat in the school or anything. Imagine like eight months on a while not eating from like, I think it was like school started at like nine to like half or like every single day on the day, then just come home and have tea kind of thing. But like, I still don't eat in Widows now because of them. What do you want to achieve to boost your confidence? Do you want to boost your confidence? Yeah? How can we do that then? We need an action plan, don't we? You can call someone ugly and they'll believe it for the rest of their life. You call someone pretty, they won't believe it for two minutes. Like, it's like, it's confusing. Following the chat with Miss Charles, Mrs. Ballard has a plan. Why is she want me to? I don't know. How's your behaviour been? Her behaviour been good? Yeah. She hopes to boost Emily's confidence by focusing on her good work rather than her bad behaviour. I do believe that she's somebody that's capable. I do believe that she's somebody that once we've got her settled down, that actually she will begin to do well. She just needs to believe in herself. Hello. Hello. Oh, come in. It doesn't look too bad, does it? <coughs> Don't look too scared. I want to tell you something. Sit down. I shut the door? Yeah, thank you. Last week, you went in... I came up to watch Miss Teaching English. And as part of that, I sort of had a look through everybody's books. You are far too smart to be in that class. Do you know that? You're far too smart to be in that class. And shall I tell you what I could tell? I could tell from the beginning when you started there, like how strong your work was and how well you were doing it, till you sort of lost hope a bit in there. I tell you, I, I, I brought your book down because I particularly wanted to show you what I meant. Do you want to come and have a sit over here for a second? Before I was a head teacher, I was English specialist. If I have a look at some of this, what you've done in here, this bit here is a fantastic piece that you wrote. When I read it through, the effort you've put in it, how clever you are describing things, right, and making pictures in people's minds from words, it's really, really strong. I've seen less good stuff than this from some of the kids in Top Set. I think you need to go up to Top Set. Truly, I think you could do it easily. I don't believe in setting people based on behaviour is the, the truth, but based on academic ability. And I am telling you, from all the experience that I've had, I could see you be able to cope with that work. Where you're year nine now, as I say, you've only got a few months left, really, until you start taking your GCSEs, and it would be really good to think we could really push you in those top sets. Well done. It's been over two weeks since the boys promised Mrs Ballard that there would be no more fights. But trouble has flared up again. It's been a bit of gossip that's gone around for quite a while. A couple of people said to him now I've been saying stuff, but I haven't. Who did they think you were saying stuff about? Kelsey. Did it have anything to do with you? I don't know. <laughs> I know some stuff was said about me. Just, I don't know what. After some gossip overnight, Sean has confronted Dan during class in period two. Sean's like mouthing off to me, like in my face, because he stood up to me. I was like, what are you time for? And he was just carrying on and that. So I seen him at lunch in the canteen. What's Dan? Kate, look! What's Dan doing?
Did you see it anyway? So I have put it in. If you're too hot, go outside and get some fresh air and cool down a bit. Did you see him headbutt each other? Did they? Yeah. They're stupid. Right. Boys are stupid. Boys are very silly sometimes, aren't they? It's lunchtime, and the Willow staff are dealing with the aftermath of a fight between best friends Dan and Sean. Oh, it's looking like a leaf. They've been mentally, haven't they? Oh. Are you going to bang any of them? No. Oh, it's just over two weeks since they promised Mrs. Ballard their days of falling out were over. So far, Dan's managed to evade the teachers. Hey, get in this way. Daniel, stay there, right? Talk to me, right? Daniel, sir, Daniel, come with me, come with me for two minutes. OK, well, come with me then. Dan, stop there. Mr Cole, the head of the behavioural unit, steps in to help. Thank you, sir. Right, just calm yourself down. Just calm yourself down, all right? He got himself in such a rage, the tears of anger came out of his face. There's no point shouting and screaming at them. The quiet, soft approach I find is often a lot better. And then, then talk to you in a calm manner, and from that you can then go and say, OK, fine, how are we going to resolve this situation? Ten minutes. Simon, let him calm down with Andy, Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> Fellas, sorry, um, we've had a little bit of an... Stop your cross face, please. Have some nice manners. We've had a little bit of an incident at break time, so I appreciate your patience just for a minute while we get it sorted out in there. For fighting, Dan and Sean will be facing exclusion. But Mrs. Ballard must decide whether this should be temporary or permanent. During lunch, duty. There was food everywhere on the floor and everything, wasn't there? There was all like chicken and that. People's food know. must have been knocked out of their hands. So, who are the people in the canteen today, lads? So, it was you? Yeah. Pippa. Pippa? Yeah. The school starts the investigation process, led by deputy head. Mr. Edwards. Kerry was right in the middle of yeah. it, apparently, because all the Hayes. girls Kerry was yeah. and Claire. Claire Townsend. Mm. They were on that side. I was on my side. It really scared a lot of the kids. OK, so that's right. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As quickly as possible, you gather all the facts, you gather all the evidence. You don't form any preconceived ideas or judgments that it's, oh, it's this person or it's that person again. You, you listen to them. It broke out, I turned around. Some people are saying that Daniel has gone up, right, and he's started this, which, which I don't know, I can't you comment didn't on see. I can't comment. I, well, I don't know who started it. You didn't see no, that? No, so, And have you clearly explained that in your well, statement? I can see is what I see. OK, all right. Okay. I know. So we've got... Daniel punching Sean, but then you've got Ian saying that Daniel and Sean have headbutted each other. Oh, God. I know, it's it's like, oh. We have to be fair to both boys. This is far from complete. I think just... they're both out tomorrow. Well, we call in more statements, but we say to Daniel's mum, this looks serious, brace yourself, he might end up permanently excluded from Willows. Right. Cheers, thanks, mum. The boys are sent home until Mrs Ballard can make a decision about their exclusion.
I think the worst case scenario with permanently excluding a, a child is that actually they don't really have a future in terms of any type of choice. Um, if a child leaves the school in today's society with no qualifications at all, with a terrible behaviour record, they might not have been able to get into a, another school to be able to achieve something, I think that could last a, a lifetime. The next morning, Mr Edwards is in early to report further findings from CCTV footage. I've looked on the cameras and what you can see is that Daniel approaches Sean. Sean sat on his own. Daniel's gone right into his face. They've put their heads against each other. Yeah. And there is kicked off. From that, I could see three witnesses, kids, who were right at the front. So I've pulled those this morning. Their statements are okay. in there. Shall it's... I just have a proper read? The kids ones. We were lining up and saw Daniel in Sean's face. Then Daniel punched him and they started to fall down for full-on fighting. Kerry says the same, tried to pull him off, couldn't. Sean says, Daniel came up to me. He then headbutted me twice. I tried to fight back and a fight started in the canteen. OK, all right. Sean did have the opportunity then to drop his eyes and walk, walk away. away. However, all of this mm. responsibility is Dan's fault. All oh, yeah. of it. Thanks for pulling all this together That's so right. thoroughly. That's, right. That's a good job. With Dan now blamed for starting the fight, he's at real risk of permanent exclusion. But Mr Cole wants to convince Mrs Ballard and the rest of her team that there is another option. He wants to move Dan into his behavioural unit, separate from the main school. What I'd like for Dan is my last chance, only because he knew instantly he'd done wrong. And it was literally, uh, yeah, I know I've done wrong. I can't backtrack and sort of unpunch the kid now, but I can sort of try to make amends. When I took him to the arrestation, he was in floods of tears, because... He, he, he knew he lost it. Yeah, he lost it completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Somewhere within him is a is a nice a I nice care. I won't stand in the way if he goes, I'll be gutted. But I can understand fully if he does go. But I'd like to try and find him something. Decisions are being made. We've asked both boys obviously to stay away today while we jest. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and I won't give up on kids, because I've seen so many kids give up on themselves, and as soon as they give up on themselves, they got nothing. It's the last ditch attempt to try and take him over the unit, because if he can get to Easter, then he's going to get his qualifications and he's not going to be excluded. It may not work, but if you don't try it, then we'll never find out. Sometimes some behaviour needs to have the permanent exclusion tag attached to it. Those decisions are tough ones. They should be rare ones and they should be a last resort. It's not going to kill anybody, yes? Mm. We'll take four. Hello. OK. Boys! Hello. Outside, <laughs> pair of you. <laughs> My ear. Right. Ready for that? Yeah, you going? Yeah. Can I be here, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Put that away in your folders, but the, the one that you've done, leave it on the desk for me to collect, OK? Right. It's maths with Mr Lachelso for the Year Nines. The Willow staff are trying to improve Emily's behaviour by focusing on her academic strengths rather than her discipline problems. Can somebody give me some multiples of three, please? Our strategy with Emily is a simple one. It's to help her gain the confidence to be her true self in school. I think listening and talking to a child makes a massive difference. 
With a bit of positive praise and encouragement from her teachers, we can make it stick and she will begin to excel. Yesterday, we talked about also prime numbers. Can somebody give me an example of prime number? Let's go with... Uh... Two. OK, who said that? Me. Two is a prime number because you're going to do one times two. How about I give you a number and I say five? I say five is a prime number. Why is that? Because you only got two factors. Because it's got only two factors. It seems to be working. In the last two weeks, her referrals have halved. It's easier to mess around than it is to understand the way. But you need to like learn to like, keep your head down and like focus. And um, what are you? Can you give me your book? Yeah, I'm going to give actually a couple of praise cards here. Yes. You did very well today. So show it to mum, yeah? Today is what? Yeah, let me say. Today is for. How would you like people to think of you? Not so much as a bad person. Miss, how can you go shower? It was here when I came. I've never used it. Actually, that's not true. Once there was a girl with some chewing gum in her hair, and I managed to get the chewing gum out of her hair by using the, the shower. But it's a bit embarrassing, really, isn't it? Like having all your own shower and everything. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I was a shower in my office. <laughs> when I get an office, so I need an office first. What are you going to do when you leave school, then, darling? Sounds like you've got some big plans. Have an office and have a shower in it. Close the door, no, leave it open, babe. Cheers. Do you care about doing well? Yeah, because otherwise you're just going to work in, like, a bin man or something. So you've got a place card. That's the thing you want then, so who was that with? Miss Lochelsum. No. Really? Is that a signature? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> So when stuff like that happens, do you go home and tell your mum? <laughs> Not really, because it's only a piece of cat saying, well done, isn't it? Like, half the time I whip some up anyway. But, like... Really? Do you? You're not a bit proud? You want to show your mum? It's a piece of cat's. How did that end up on your fridge, then? Oh, my mum found it in my school bag. That's why I don't take school bags no more. It's a few days after the fight between Dan and Sean. Mrs Ballard must decide whether Dan should be permanently excluded or can stay at the school in the behavioural unit. Have a sit, Dan. Do you want to take your coat off for a minute, a minute, Dan? She's asked Dan and his mum to come in to give them the news. You have a son, at times his anger just takes over, over him. Yes, absolutely. When the fight broke out, it was you that went for him first, according to two members of staff that saw it. And one of the things I've always got to be sure of, and I said this to you before, is that everybody's safe in school. It really, really let us down this, this time, right? That's what's got to stop, is that bit of red mist in you when you just think to yourself, I'm sorting this out. But actually, somewhere in it, something stopped you from hurting him. Even though to everybody it looked really bad, do you think you were wrong what you did, or do you think it was justified? Honestly. Wrong. OK, I'm so relieved to hear you say that, Dan. I really am. So I think because of that, I'm not prepared to chat you out of school. We are going to keep you as a pupil of Willows High School if you want us to. You're going to be unit-based, right? You're going to stay in the unit. <laughs> you are not allowed back into mainstream school. That means you won't be going to break at the same time. And it's going to have to be written in tablets of stone, mate, is that if you go to the main side of the school, that's curtains, that's it. This is literally the last chance saloon. That's what I'm asking now. Don't let me down, please. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, the school's putting a lot of faith in you right now. I mean, as what's already been said, you know, they have had the option, you know, to completely kick you out of school. And, you know, you should feel very grateful that they're not going down that route right now. What I'd love to see personally is him make it all the way through to the end of the school and when we are leaving... Oh, and finish on a high, finish you know. and walk out of you thinking, yeah, we had them sticky times on the way, but you actually managed it down five years. That's why I don't want to... That's why I don't want you to throw it away now in the last six... less than six months before you actually... Believe, all the year 11s will be leaving school. And I want you to walk down that drive going, yeah, I made it. Right, you're still Willows then. Thank you for your support. Thank no, no, you. it's absolutely... Fine, so. Were you surprised when she said you could come back into school? Yeah. 
Why? Because if it was any other squaw, I know they would have said Tara. I do have a choice in, in what happens because of Sean not being hurt. Because he hasn't sustained in injuries, it gives me the opportunity to think, OK, all right, this has happened. It looked dreadful at the, the time. You know, it was very heated in terms of what was uh, occurring. Um, but I also think because he's in year 11, I can provide him for him and our behaviour unit to get him through to the end of his studies. What are you going to do over the next couple of months? Put my head down. And what do you want to achieve? Uh, good GCSEs. I want to at least prove to most of the teachers I have changed and I want them to see I'm trying. You got a second? Since the fight, Sean's been getting on with everyday school life. I haven't had a chance to catch up with you and just make sure you're all all right and, and everything. We had a meeting with Dan and his mum on Friday, um, so we've agreed the fact that he doesn't come back in the mainstream school any, anymore. Yeah. Um, he did convince us that actually he's not looking out for you or anything like, yeah, no, like I've, that. I've seen him. I've seen him two days after it happened. Yeah. He apologised. And yeah, well, yeah. Mr. Cole's putting a provision together so you can walk around with ease. All right, good boy. Have a good day. Thanks. I'm thinking, why the hell did we have a fight? And then I remember, and then I go, well, that, that was really stupid. The exam tomorrow needs to be in for nine because it'll probably be in here. In uh, here? Yeah. Dan's been adjusting to life in the unit. He's separated from his friends and classmates during school hours. If you could do anything in life, what would you want to do? Anything. Um... Just go back to year seven and start all over again, because I know I've done wrong. Looks like Daniel's in the lead at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I think it's definitely part of a head teacher's job to guide children through these teenage years. <laughs> in a job like this, when you've worked with a child that's had the toughest time, that against all the odds has managed to get through, and, and you know that some of the reason for that is to do with you or your team, it truly is the most rewarding thing of all. <laughs> As soon as Mr Vaughan says you may start, the first thing you do is open that door. Next time. <laughs> I met my love. Auditions are on for the Willows end of term concert. They're gonna hate me, all right? I killed it. But with only four weeks to rehearse and a sold out audience. I don't know how to do that part. Oh my God, I'm flipping stressing. Can two year eights pull it off? <laughs>